Hello. Hello, everyone. Hello, Facebook. I had to make sure that I was on record. But I hope everyone is doing fine on this evening. Your families are doing fine. Oh, my. We have gotten such a change in weather. It has been cool today. It's um been a nice day. The sun's been out, but that wind is just blowing. <laughs> we had a lot of um rain to come through here last night where I'm at, and I guess it just brought in the cold weather with the cold front, and it's just the wind has just been very cold. So I got on a sweater. I couldn't put on anything lighter than this today because it was just I'm not a fan of cold weather, and it's just too cold. But um. I want to give two birthday shout outs. Today I have two um, special people in my family that are celebrating birthdays. First is my cousin Maggie Rogers. She is a very beautiful, intelligent young woman. I won't even give her age, but she's like a year behind me. <laughs> And I'm almost tempted to say her government name. So, Maggie, if you're watching this, if I slip up and say your government name, I don't mean it. But I want to just share um, with everyone how special she is to me. We met in our early teens. I was 14 and she was 13. And she um, came to see her father here in North Carolina, which is my uncle. She um, was living in Seattle, Washington at the time with her mother. And when I met her, I was just so, um, so I just fell in love with her. You know, that was the first time that we met. She is half Samoan and, of course, half black. And if you know anything about me, I am, I'm a people person. I have a sense of humor. Um, for those of you who know me personally, you can, I'm quite sure you can say that about me, um, that, I love learning. One of the things in school, one of my favorite subjects in school um, was world cultures. I remember taking that in uh, ninth grade, my freshman year in high school. And then um, I loved history. I always learned to learn about people and other cultures. So when I met Maggie and to know, to learn that, you know, she was, her mother is from um, a Poly Polynesian country called Samoa. It just really like, wow you know i know somebody who's you know maybe grew up that's grown up in a different uh home than i have and having to learn a different know a different language it was just you know fascinating to me and <laughs> another thing y'all i just um i used to watch wrestling and how many of y'all remember my favorite wrestler and i know y'all know who it is Dwayne johnson the rock you know, <laughs> he would come out, you know, get in the ring when he got ready to face his opponent. And y'all know his famous line, can you smell what the rock is cooking? And you know, he's half Samoan and black. So to know that I have a cousin who's half Samoan and black, I was like, oh, wow. <laughs> I know y'all, that was, that was, uh, that's just my story. But she is a very special young lady. And of course, I have, um my younger brother i want to say baby brother but he's not a baby anymore he's turned 16 today his name is abraham and i got a picture of abraham i don't know if he's ever gonna see this um video y'all but this is a picture of him i don't know if y'all can see that real good that's um me and him sitting on the couch and he's just sitting there with his diaper on and i tell you time <laughs> sitting on me oh time has i just cannot believe how fast time goes you know um these children grow up so fast and if you have children i don't have any children but i have nieces and nephews and little cousins and just see them now a lot of them are grown and got children of their own you just sit back and can't believe how fast time goes so happy birthday to him He's working now. I think he's got his permit. I'm not for sure. I haven't talked to him um, today or in a while. But um, definitely, I did text him today. Let him know that I know it's his birthday and wish him a happy birthday. So, well, <laughs> um, I also wanted to come on and talk to um, 
my single ladies today. You know, this is something that I've really been putting off. And I just believe that God is giving me the okay. Because when I come on and share these videos, um, as you notice, I don't know if you can tell, but I never go live. I'm just not comfortable with going live yet. But I always record and then I upload to my Facebook account. And when I do come on, the things that I talk about are things that I have experienced in my life and I always seek God and I wait for his confirmation and get his approval on should I share and talk about it and he has um, confirmed that you know it's go all right to go ahead and talk about what I'm gonna say to my single ladies on today and I want to let you know for you all who are listening to me um, that I completely understand Trust me, I understand, and I have a lot of friends. I have, you know, some family that are still single and waiting, but I want you to know, two things I want to talk to you today about is, first off, is be still, and the second thing I want to bring up and talk about is keep waiting, and I know these are things that, two things that you know to do that you never that it's nothing new to you. It's not, you already know that you got to be still, pray, and wait. But I want to um, dig deeper into um, what it is to be still and what it is to really wait on God. So bear with me, guys. This one might be a little long. I'm just leaning on the Holy Spirit. I'm just waiting on, well, I'm going to, you know, seeking Him and um, waiting on Him to help me through this and get through it because sometimes I get a little um I don't want to get ahead of myself I definitely want him to lead me in what I have to say in this video so as you all know I'm also a writer an author I have authored four books um they're in the process well I'm in the process of getting them republished so it's taken um a lot longer than what I expected it to but it's going to be a a while before I can get those books back out there online um some things happened with the last publisher I was with and I was with them for seven years and then they just decided to stop publishing so I'm in the process of looking for someone else to do that but um it's kind of on the back burner right now I know a lot of people have been asking me about my books and I've gotten some great reviews on my books and I just thank God that the gift that he's given me of writing has touched so many people. You know, your gift will make room for you. So when you use it to give him glory and to edify and help others, I'm telling you, he's you're gonna um, see the 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 labor of your the the fruit of your labor and be able to just thank God that so many people were touched by what it is he called you to do. So that's a blessing in itself. But one thing that um, I like to do is order books. Um, I'm always on Amazon, which is a bad habit that I've got. I'm always on Amazon, you know, <laughs> um, looking through whatever, you know, looking for books. And if I see a book and it interests my, it you know, it draws my interest, then I'll, of course, uh, read the reviews. I'll look at the the cover, you know, they say you can't judge a book by its cover. So I always look at the cover and then I um, go in and I'll read the synopsis on the back of the book. And if it, you know, if it interests me, I'll order the book. So y'all right now, I've got four books that I'm trying to read at one time. It's like three or four books that I'm trying to read at one time. And one of the books um, that I got <laughs> that this book is by Jennifer smith and it's called 31 prayers for my husband seeing god move in his heart now i know some of you are going to say what on the what on earth are you doing with a book that really is addressing a married woman praying for her husband but let me say about this author when i went to her website i think it was an ad on facebook that um i saw and when I clicked on the ad, it took me to her website. She and her husband, her, his name is Aaron Smith. They are um, 
uh, relationship coaches. Um, I think they're pastors. I'm not for sure. But they um, pretty much, you know, are in ministry dealing with relational issues as far as a husband and wife or if you're dating, you know, fiance, boyfriend, girlfriend, fiance, dating, courting, whatever. Um, they give godly insight into what should um, come of those relationships and they give a good basis. So that's what really drew my attention um, to her particular book. She does have other books um, about, you know, fiancés and um, praying for them, um, knowing how to conduct yourself in that in that relationship. Like I said, if you're dating, you you know, you're, you're courting, you know, those, those are prayers that she has in those books that can really help you um, navigate through the relationship. And this one, for some reason, this book really caught my attention i don't know why i just had to buy this book and as as i was reading through the book um god let me he showed me he let me see that one of the most important things that a woman is going to do as a wife is pray for her husband is pray i know it sounds like you know well I already know that, you know, you may be saying, well, Nesesca, you know, I already know that I need to pray, but you have got to know that prayer is important because that is going to be the main thing in your marriage. And let me go ahead and say this while I'm thinking about it. Um, I understand too, that we are all on our journey on our own, our own journeys. And for those of us who um, are comfortable and say I'm satisfied being single and I don't desire to be married. I want to let you know that that is it's nothing wrong with that. That singleness is a gift from God. It is a gift from God. Just like marriage is a gift from God, singleness is a gift of God. And it, I don't think that we really look at it that way. One of the things that God um did for me has done for me he connected me with this ministry this was like back in 2011 i had just moved to salisbury and i got connected with this ministry and the pastor's wife um she really was a teacher to the singles and actually their ministry was based out of chicago i mean this is how God works, y'all. He will give you what you need when you need when you when you are at your wits' end and when you don't know where to turn, you're looking for answers. Trust me, God will answer you. He will send you what you need when you are ready to receive it. And I was looking at this broadcast, and that's how I learned of their ministry. They're like I said, they're based out of Chicago, but I just fell in love with their their ministry. I actually got to meet them uh, maybe two years later they came to charlotte because salisbury is like maybe 40 45 minutes from charlotte so i went to charlotte to see them because they were traveling um to speak to because they have a um, well-known ministry and they were traveling to come and speak to the singles in the charlotte area and i met them both wonderful people godly people i trusted I trust their, their teaching in this area because this is something that this topic of, of singleness is very near and near to my heart because uh, and when I, when I say that I can understand completely how you feel as a single woman, it's only because I've been having to walk it out for so long myself and God has kept me and trust me, he will keep you if you want to be kept. But I'm going to get back to that book in a little bit. But I want to say this about the singleness and you, those of you who, uh, those of us who want to remain single, it's nothing wrong with that because it is a gift. You know, Apostle Paul lets us know that single, singleness is a gift. You know, you have devoted time to God. You have time, all the time in the world to spend with God and really there's nobody else <laughs> that's going to be really, that's going to take his place. They can, um 
take his place. He's God, you know. He has to be first and foremost in your life. When you get married, of course, your attention, it just can't be all about you. It has to be about your husband. You're going to care for the things of your husband and of the world. And you're going to care for what his concerns are about because you all become one flesh, you know. So our attention is going to be divided. We're going to have a relationship with God, but you got to understand that your attention is going to be divided and your attention is going to be pretty much on your husband, husband, making sure that you all can grow, that you all can build together, grow together, live together, learn how to love each other. Because, y'all, we got so many divorces, so many breakups that we see in and out the church. But we have to know that that's not God's will. That's not God's will. And there's so many things to, you know, so many things that lead up to people getting divorced or um, separating or whatever. And we have to know that is not the will of God. We have to know that. And I just want you to know, for those of you who are wanting to remain single, it's nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that at all. Don't let nobody tell you that is something wrong with it. And I can, and listen, I got some stories to tell y'all. I'm t- I can tell y'all some stories. I have been ridiculed. I have been, you know, misunderstood. All type of things. But God let me know. And one of, oh yeah, one of the things that, um, that, that, that this lady would say, um, the lady of the ministry that I was referring to just a minute ago about, you know, her teaching she would always say, singleness is not a problem to be solved, but a gift to be enjoyed. So if you see singleness as a problem, you're going to go out there and try to fix it yourself. Because, you know, we think that it's something wrong with it, and it's not. It's not. It's all in how you look at it, how you see it. I'm telling you, it is a gift. But for those of us who want to be married, who have a desire to be married, that desire comes from God, and it's nothing wrong with that. It's nothing wrong with that. God, you know, he did not create us to be um, in this world by ourselves. And if we desire a spouse, a lifetime spouse, we desire to be with someone, you know, it's nothing wrong with that. That's, a, that's natural. That's natural. It's as natural as breathing. But you have to understand there's responsibility to come in with that. There's a responsibility. And I'm telling you, you have to really prepare yourself. You gotta, If you're praying for a husband, then you need to prepare for the husband. You know, there's so many things. And one of the things I said as before is to be still, be still, wait on him. I'm telling you, he will not fail you. And if you do what he tells you to do, He's not going to withhold anything good from you. The Bible says he, if you delight in him, he'll give you the desires of your heart. He doesn't want to withhold anything good from us. And marriage is good. You know, some people in our society, a lot of people um, feel like there's no need. You know, why bother? People don't stay together. But listen, if your foundation is God and you know that you want, you know that you want a successful marriage then trust me, it will happen for you. It will happen for you. And secondly, I want to talk about waiting on him, waiting on him. There are certain things that he's going to tell you to do while you wait. And one of those things, as I said before, is that he will keep you while you're waiting. He will keep you. God will keep you if you want to be kept. And I'm going to look at two stories. We're going to look at, I'm going to mention, reference two stories in the Bible that why it's important to be kept. And what I mean by, and I'm being transparent on here because, listen, I believe in making it plain, being transparent, being relevant about the days and time that we live in. You know, um, the Bible is relevant. The Bible is not never going to go out of style. It's never going to lose its power. 
Listen, the blood, blood of Jesus, we know, never loses its power. Well, the word of God is going to stay here. It's going to remain. Even when heaven and earth pass away, the Bible lets us know that the word is going to remain. And the word is what's going to keep us. So I'm going to be referring to two stories in the Bible that teaches us the importance of waiting and letting God keep you because he will keep you. And what I mean by keep you is your body, keeping your body from going out there, laying up with with a man that you're not in that you are not married to, you know, having sex outside of marriage. And what it can do to you as a woman. Because believe it or not, I know this is a world that we, the world we live in now is telling women, oh, you can go out there, you can do what you want to do, you know, it don't matter, you know, women's, you know, we're women, it's not like we're living back in the 40s and 50s, but the word of God, as I said before, never changes, it's going to remain, and if you are a woman after God's own heart, you're going to stay steadfast, unmovable, because you you understand that God changes not. He's the same today, yesterday, and forevermore. And this is not to um, bash anybody, make anybody feel bad. Because I understand um, we all have made mistakes. But let me tell you something. How many of you know that God, he reconciles us back to him? He reconciles us back to him. You know, this Sunday, this coming up Sunday is Resurrection Sunday. And we're going to be, a lot of us are going to be um, in church or watching online or whatever, um, giving reverence to God, to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, because he died on this on the cross for our sins. So he is our redeemer. He's the one who can wash us and make us cleanse. You know, he can cleanse us from all sin and all unrighteousness. He is there to forgive us. And this is not what... That's not what I'm, you know, I'm not trying to say that, you know, God don't forgive us of sin. Of course he does. He died for us. But I'm more focusing on the after effects of sin because there is a consequence to sin. And one of those as women um, having premarital sex, out, having sex outside marriage is that of um, embarrassment and that of just feeling like you, you lose your worth. So I'm going to go to John chapter four. John chapter four is where we learn of a woman who was caught in the very act of adultery. And for those of us who are familiar with this story, know that when she was caught in the very act, and like I said, I'm gonna make it plain, but keep it relevant, y'all. The only thing that I can think when I think of that, and like I said, I have uh, my mind just you know, I have a sense of humor, y'all. <laughs> so when I read this story, and the Holy Spirit was really dealing with me about a woman who you know really. Why a woman can lose her her self respect and can lose her value and feel like you know she's worth nothing because y'all when the people brought her to Jesus and like I said it made the Bible made mention that she was caught in the very act so we don't know who was on top of who none of that but I'm just saying you can only imagine okay but when they brought her to Jesus and we know that. The Bible, they wanted to stone her, but they did not bring the man. They did not bring the man. And there was a reason for that. Because the woman is the one whom people, it, it's understood that a woman shouldn't conduct herself in that manner. That's why they wanted to stone her. Yes, the man was just as equally wrong. But they didn't bring him out. They snatched her up and brought her before Jesus. And they wanted to stone her. But, of course, our Lord challenged them in that belief and said, Who are you 
Who are you among you who are without sin? You cast the first stone and none of them could do it. They had to throw their stones down and walk away because all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So he told that woman when the crowd had left, he said, he told her, I don't condemn you. He said, but go and sin no more. Because that woman needed to know that she was of value, that she was forgiven of her sin, and that she didn't have to engage in premarital sex, have sex, have an adulterous affair with a married man because she was worth, the, she was, um, her worth was um, far more than that. And the Bible tells us that your worth, ladies, is far above the price of rubies. So when God looks at me, when he looks at you, he sees a diamond, he sees a jewel, he, he sees a ruby, he sees he sees a value. We know that certain gems, certain um like um jewelry, like gold, silver, it carries um a, a value. You know, you can go to the store right now and you see a diamond and you want that diamond, but guess what? It's gonna cost you a pretty penny because it's a value, it has it's, it's something of quality. And that's how God looks at me and looks at you. Then we can go over to chap, uh, John chapter 8, just a few chapters over. And I'm trying to, let me turn to it. Um, John chapter 8. And we learn about another woman. This is the woman at the well, the Samaritan woman. And there was a certain time of day that the women in the town would come and draw water. Now, I'm par paraphrasing this. You all are welcome, you know, please go back and read and understand. I, I pray that God would give you the revelation that he gave me um, as to what I'm saying and pointing this out about our value and why it's so important for us to be um, in our, our, to know who we are in Christ and so that we can get to a place where God can really deal with us and heal us of all our um, wounds and get us to a place where we can be in a rightful place to pray for that husband and, and wait on him the right way. Amen. So John chapter 8. Again, this is the woman at the well or the Samaritan woman for all of us, for those of us who are familiar with the story. And as I was saying, there was a certain time of day that the women of the town would come and draw water at Jacob's well. So this woman, we don't know her name, but this woman would make sure that she was at the well by herself. She wouldn't come when the other women would come and draw water at the well. So as we know, our Lord Jesus was sitting there waiting on her one day. He knew he was there to um, restore her. Because as we know, she had five husbands. And she was living with a man that wasn't her, even her husband. She had had five husbands. And the man she was living with wasn't even her husband. So God wanted to sit there. And he told her everything about her. It revived her. And as we know, the story says that she went back into the town to tell everybody about a man who told me everything I have ever done. Because again, it was understood that a woman should conduct herself in that manner. It was dis it brought disgrace. But see, that's when she needed that encounter with our Lord because he was going to tell her who she was. So I'm telling you, this is why we have to understand what it is to wait on God and be kept by him. Because he, will, he, don't, he doesn't want our value to be diminished. He wants, to, he wants us to know who we are in him. And also, um, I want to share this little story too. I had something personal that happened to me. I'll never forget it. I was attending um, community college. This was years ago. And... There was this young man in my class, y'all, and I believe he had a little crush on me. I don't know, maybe he, I think he did. He had a little crush on me. And he, I think my recorder is about to go off, y'all, but I'm going to have to tell this story. But um, 
<laughs> he um really he sat down beside me one one day in class and for some reason he just started talking to me and he said you know Nasaska when men get ready to marry they look for someone like you you know they don't date these they may you know fool around with loud women or women who are you know out there or whatever but when they get ready to settle down and marry they look for someone like you i said what in the world was he telling me that for that's what made me think that y'all he had a little crush on me but that stood with me and it let me know that even though i didn't really know him because he's pretty much sat across the room from me just that particular day i just happened to sit by him for some reason i don't know but I believe that was God's way of letting me know back then that I see you as value. You got to know your value. Because men that are looking for wives, trust me, they're looking for a certain type of woman. And again, I'm not saying this to bash anybody. I want you to know God loves you. Yes, he forgives us of our sins. He doesn't look at our mistakes. He forgives us. He cleanses us. But I want you to keep that in mind. I better help him get off of here because I think this, I think it's going to cut me off. But I love you. God bless you. I hope you got something out of this. And I will see you next time. Happy Resurrection Sunday. God bless.